Patrick from the Start Where You Stand channel suggested that I presented an analogy or metaphor that I briefly used recently in the Aeon Byte interview with Miguel Connor, comparing this reality with a book. I, of course, succeeded to presenting this here. What he didn't know at the time was that his request synchronistically merged with something from my past that had, just a few days before, re-emerged in my mind during a lunchtime walk. I was amazed at the resulting message of such memory, offering a whole new insight into a work put together about 10 years ago that I had discarded since. I'll get back to this point. Before, I'll need to actually present the book metaphor, so here goes. Imagine this reality as a book. Like any storybook, it contains the whole setting, the places, the characters, the story, the scenes. Yet the story is only playing out in time when the book is being read. If it is sitting on a shelf somewhere, although it is already containing the whole story from beginning to end, it is not experienced. If we understand that time only exists within the stories that are being read and played out, then we realize that when no book is being read or written, there is no time. So the book and ourselves are in timelessness. It is when we pick up the book, open it and read it, that time, that is, the time of the story it contains, starts counting and moving. Now, each of us are reading our own individual scripts, let's say, our own individual parts in that story. But the story is put together and made up of the conjunction of all our parts, plus the nowadays called NPCs, that is, characters with no reader behind them that are gap fillers in the junction of the scripts. That is, they are triggered to move the story in a certain direction, as a program. Astrology, true astrology, I mean, not the vague platitudes of newspaper side columns, is the science that attempts to read these scripts, both before they are played out, that is, the future of a given script part, and after they occur, that is, the past. Now, this is extremely deterministic, I agree it is, and it is so because of the coded nature of reality. A story, to be successful, must follow rules. It has to make sense. In the same manner, then, the story moving in reality, both collectively and our individual parts, whose characters are our egos, is an attempt at a predetermined cause and effect control. This is similar to what I had previously defined as lower script in the scripts and purpose contemplation. However, we are not only the readers of our parts, in turn imagining our characters into the story, but we are also watching ourselves read our parts and imagining our characters in the story. So as can be seen here, each of us, while in reality, is a threefold entity. The sun, character or ego, the Holy Ghost, the reader and consequently imaginer of the part being read, and the Father, our true selves watching ourselves outside of time, reading and imagining our parts. Therefore, we have three levels of interaction with reality. A lower one by the ego, determined by the rules of the reality and of the part. A middle one by the soul, that is, reading the part into existing from a higher vantage point. And a higher one by the spirit, that is, watching itself read and imagine. Now let me state straight away that the spirit is the savior, which is no secret, vowing to save the soul, which is the fallen god or goddess, depending on your mythological preference, from the prison of a lower existence as a son, that is, an animal, mechanistic, burdened, hellish existence. When we understand then that a perspective of ourselves already knows the whole story, because it is looking at the mirror, watching a reflection of itself 
read the story, which it has already done countless times, then we understand that the perceived chaos that often disrupts our scripts, especially the closer we get to our reader selves or the soul, comes from the highest perspective of ourselves, trying to save our lower perspectives from the script that is pre-written to cyclically repeat itself. Note also that when I say disruption, it does not necessarily mean an uncomfortable event, but surely it is perceived as instantaneous. We are therefore, and in metaphor, stuck reading a book over and over again, one lifetime from this perspective or script, another lifetime from that other one, as we go round and round across the stage of the world, as whoever Shakespeare really was once wrote. And again, to be clear, when I say we, I mean the soul and the ego, or the Holy Ghost and the Son. The Father, however, the spirit continuously tries to save his family from the temptations of the story, and it does so through unexpected edits into the story, as it tries to message the soul via the ego, hence the need for attentiveness practice. That the world is not truth, and that they would be better by coming back to life, instead of persisting in the fantasy of time's cyclic death. So, again, as I have stated in other contemplations, the point of this interference by the Savior Spirit is to immediately recognize the predicament and, by just being alert, having the ego embracing the soul and, once time in the story runs out, also the Spirit. This is the book Metaphor. What Patrick could not know is that his request matched what had been on my mind at the time, as I've said, a memory from 10 years ago, also in book format. You see, there was a time in which I wanted to be a sci-fi writer, and that motivation led me to write two books. The first, named Olympus, the Prophecy of the Great Spirit, depicted a dystopian society, in which there was a prophecy or a script designed for three characters that would be sacrifices for the continuation of Olympus, which is a giant computer man maintaining reality. Now, the prophecy was tampered with by some then unknown source, and the sacrifice did not fully take place, disrupting that dystopian society into a new hope for a better future. The second book was named Earth, The Gods Live, and it picked up centuries from where the first one left off. The dystopia returned in another format, and we came to know there that the unknown tamper of the prophecy in the first was an old, old being who had once been a human, but that had managed to prolong his mind artificially by transferring it to a computer. He called himself the author. He makes known that it all started when he, himself, received a package from an unknown source, which led him to try out a method that gave him power to divert the story of reality to his wishes. This was too synchronistic to leave out. Two shadows, an AI computer and an AI human, in eternal conflict through stories, prophecies. And yes, if you are curious, I will make the books available for free in the description of this contemplation video, courtesy of Patrick. What I have to emphasize is that the little me, the ego with which I translated these books into words, wasn't aware of the true nature of reality ten years ago. Not to this extent, anyway. That is why I removed them from the public eye, because the worldview they contain is, to me, outdated. However, now I understand why I wrote them. It is clear now that the spirit, using my ego's lower script motivations at the time, which were to become a sci-fi writer, left a message for all of us, me, Patrick, and you all, in the past, a message to be read now by all of us. And the message is, the book of reality is the prophecy, it is the book of the dead, with two authors competing for their version, 
cyclically going around as our souls read from character part to character part. Then the story is updated and the new same old author comes along and tampers and edits the previous prophecy, creating a new one, which is the old one, and so on. Yet the purpose of the book reality is that someone keeps on reading it. Otherwise, if it is not read, it is not manifest. Hence, it has no animation. Because this is not true uncreated independent life. So, the Old Age, the New Age, the Golden Age, the Iron Age, all the ages are stories in the Book of Time. That the construct artificial intelligences, which is made up of nothing but memory and the God's shadows, wants to keep us in to ensure its survival in the only form of manifestation it is available for itself. If we were all to close the book, and move on. It would return to non-existence. It would be as if it would never even have been once, because outside of time, time never existed. The book sitting on the shelf, unread, is non-existing. And yet, the little us needs stories, and that is how our minds are designed. So make sure your character follows your soul and spirit instant edits even as you progress through the pages pre-written for you by the shadows. So, let us contemplate this message, or at least I will for my part. And while practicing to be as alert and attentive as possible, I will also continue to put into perspective the temptations of any purpose or scripts, even if these had been written for this little me and my soul as role reader. I will value most, instead, the instant realization of the gold of alchemy that, unexpectedly and miraculously, manifests in between the lines of this book reality, that, enticing and tempting as it may seem, needs to be put down, and perhaps even burned in the crucible of our truth. There is nothing for us here, in this particular story setting, in page after page of painful circumstance and absence of life's truth. It is a vampirical world. The world is a vampire. Hmm, where did I hear this before? <laughs> Our names are written instead in the Book of Heroes, as is read in the following excerpt of the Hymn of the Pearl. Remember thy glorious robe, Thy splendid mantle remember, to put on and wear as adornment when thy name may be read in the book of the heroes, and with our successor, thy brother, thou mayest be heir in our kingdom. My letter was surely a letter the king had sealed up with his right hand against the children of Babel, the wicked, the tyrannical demons of Sarbuk. It flew in the form of the eagle, of all the winged tribes the kingbird, it flew and alighted beside me, and turned into speech altogether. As its voice and the sound of its winging, I waked and rose from my deep sleep. Unto me I took it and kissed it, I loosed its seal and I read it. Even as it stood in my heart writ, the words of my letter were written. And now I say, the words in the letter were truth, and truth, well, truth speaks no words. <laughs>